Hello and welcome to Life is Magical podcast. I'm your host Sri Manju Katrakada, intuitive healer, Akashic records reader, Hay House author of Connect Your Inner Guide book. And who believes in experiencing healing and life is magical. Through this show I'll be sharing my toolbox which is full of life hacks, tips for rainy days, ways to hold our connections with the inner guide and much more fun things. Let us begin this journey. Hi beautiful selves. This is Sri Manjio. I'm bringing you with today's podcast of color your life. This is my favorite topic as a child coming into the adult and into the healing journey. Colors have made a huge impact in my life and colors have been so moving and speaking to me. I just want to bring that out with you all and share. And also it's part of a chapter that I wrote in my book, Connect Your Inner Guide. If you have the book, uh, you can re-look into that chapter. If not here, I'm going to share some pointers that are stuck to me and that I'm growing with those uh, thoughts as well. Here, the first thing is that as Paulo Coelho says, love is a feeling completely bound up with color. like thousands of rainbows superimposed one on top of the other and colors are very important part of everyone's life just not only me they absolutely influence our existence our mind body soul connection and influence into shifting our moods lightening it up or making it heavy have you ever thought like you know some people take a long time to even think what is the color of their kitchen going to be or the bedroom or the living room is going to be some people we say they could be picky but it's so important because that is the huge portion of your time your life you're going to be spending and if the color doesn't speak to you it's going to add more downward uh, spiral in our lives we say for example you're in a living room every night trying to relax but the color that you chose for the walls is not speaking to you you kind of far going into a unhealthy state of mind as it's not speaking as it's not lighting up as it's not relaxing you right so here is this is where first observation comes in are the colors around you speaking to you if so what are they telling you just pause look around and notice what's there and these colors in definitely uh, affect our behaviors our temper and also our spiritual growth and the characters that we bring as well say for example red color may be a good grounding color but maybe not when you are trying to relax like you know or uh, it could trigger your emotions or make you hyper so each of us individually we are so different in a way that our mind speaks to these colors these prisms is so different and there is such thing as like not all the colors are the same for everyone's eye as well again go by the sense of it and feel what it means to you and as part of my own inner awakening i found myself changing tones of my colors and colors are fun to play with but depends on how much we are open to playing being playful with them and my favorite part of um, my <clears throat> until my 30s until then my favorite color that i remember was always black but since i was attuned to reiki purple came into my life and till today over a decade purple is my favorite color right now doesn't mean that i don't like black i do like but purple is taking over it's just those colors that i saw in my attunement initiation while the process was happening i just couldn't forget it and it stuck to me and i changed the walls bed sheets everything to be purple in my healing room it just so brings in me such a calmness and also knowing that there is this higher self there is a spiritual growth It just helps me to anchor as well in the white again white is another favorite color um i see it as anything 
<clears throat> you can add to white and that's the beauty about it how it takes in right and give me a plain canvas i can fill it with colors for sure and that's the advantage of having so much but there was a couple of times um, that i have actually noticed that i have shopped not knowingly greens all the shades of greens now i can bet you i have all the shades of green in my wardrobe um at that particular point of my life, I was just looking for greens. And this was not done knowingly, unknowingly. And then another shade of life was all about the orange color and yellow color that I was bringing, which I absolutely don't like orange or yellow. But those are the moments of my life that I needed that healing and those colors were giving me. And when I look back, I could see those colors all around me, but they did so much of uplifting and healing deep within that the words couldn't heal me. And that was interesting to look back as well. So do check in your wardrobe. What are the colors that are standing out? And if you were buying or shopping at a particular time of your life, and uh, what were the colors that you were drawn to? Has there been any traumatic event? Or has there been anything uh, major, happy moments or not so happy moments happening? that you would notice that, like, you know, let those colors speak to you again. And here, <clears throat> it just surprises me every time I shop for these colors. Sometimes I feel I need to ask myself if this is really for me or my state of mind right now, now that I'm aware of it. Like, you know, why am I attracted? And recently I was shopping a couple of months ago and knowingly, unknowingly, I just picked all the blues and the purples and uh, indigos. And when I came back, I checked my shopping bag was full of those color shades. And it was just like, hmm, what is this saying to me now? Like, you know, and it was interesting to sit in and understand those colors to me. In this, um, the senses of the colors are the reflection to our emotions and links to our chakras as well. Sense of colors reflect to the sense of life. And uh, chakras are energy spinning wheels within our body. These are little vortexes that are connected to our uh, soul, our uh, characters, our emotions, physical body, everything. If you don't believe on that, that's okay. I respect you. But think about like, you know, there is the colors that you're attracted to. Our auric field, the energy field around us is filled with colors as well. Again, that speaks a lot about it. You know, a person carrying a strong yellow color, what is it? And you can take a picture of the auric field by something called Kirkland photography, where uh, it's, this is an uh, instrument where they take a picture and it uh, projects out your auric field yeah so that is an interesting one so check out that's for sure like even if it's not chakras but our aura carries the colors you know and it's not about someone telling you who you are but it is about your own realization who you truly are and the best way to create uh, more free time is by creating it for yourself in generally, when it's coming down to our own time, self-care, self-worth, all that, we wait for the permission to be given. But we forget that permission has no relevance here. It's you showing up and doing the work is the most important thing. And a lot of people <clears throat> pause on their actions saying, oh, my kids are young, I don't get time, or my kids needs to be grown up to find time. And now I meet people on the other side where the kids are grown up and they say, I'm confused. I don't know what I'm any more interested in because all these years I have spent time with the kids, like, you know, and now they have left for colleges. I just don't know what to do. What am I good at? Like, you know, and when they retire, absolutely no clue about and it's not about just the creativity and the colors, but it's also about what are your joyful portals? What is that fun for you? Creativity is just not about like art because that's the first thing that we get into, but it's about moving your soul, moving your body, moving your inner emotions. That's where it is. For some people, it could be the dance. It could be by uh, going for a walk, meeting like-minded people. 
taking photography or doing collages or it could be um, candle making. It could be something that you're interestingly making out of the nature, the woods, the rock painting, anything it could be that's fun, joyful. Think about creativity is something that the children would love to do. Anything they would love to do, um, give them a trash. They can come up with an idea to make out of the trash a recycling item. Like, you know, they're so easy into it as long as there is no gadgets nearby, right? So this is where your creative portal is stored in. And <clears throat> before giving an excuse the next time, think about, do you not even have 15 minutes a day for yourself? Think about where the life is leading at what a pace it's leading into. And if it's not something that you're able to shift, move the things, give yourself the value, the first thing, that's the most important thing. Like, you know, don't prioritize yourself to be the last one. Maybe you can cut down on that Netflix show or maybe you can cut down on um, talking to a person who is no negative, draining your energy is like, right? You can do something inspiring you uplifting you that is your priority and that's the most important thing to be done and we can do this when we are in control of our emotions or when you are in a good place like you know and um, the children they just go pick their craft room and do stuff they don't wait for the permission they don't wait for someone saying hey um, I need time for it, like, you know, or I'm not finding time to do it. That's all your inner child, your connection is saying about. So don't wait until you're old enough to paint. Now that, uh, think about, like, there is a trapped inner child who didn't get to enjoy the most, trying to be grown-up adults, but now bring it out. Don't do the injustice to your little inner child within you now that you are adult and you can give that permission to yourself. You deserve that. And going back a little bit into my own journey, as a child, um, in my teenage years, it was a little rough and um, hard emotions and everything. I took yoga as a peace, uh, bringing peace and calmness. I remember waking up at four o'clock, getting the public transport, going into the yoga class and then coming home and then going to the school and the colleges. That's something I really loved it. I don't regret about it. I'm glad I found yoga at that time. But I wish I knew more about the spirituality and other essences back then. But hey, never too late. But the other portal that I found was art. I used to do a lot of sketching, a lot of drawing. And I even wanted to become a full-time artist. But then, because of the social beliefs that artists don't make enough, it's going to be challenging it's going to be a hard life, don't need to struggle, go into the computers or uh, medicine. That was the suggestions given to me. So I paused it. I paused it as a main time career, but I never paused it as my hobby, my <clears throat> uh, let it out portal, if you can say that. That was always my portal to express myself. I used to even write journals back then, and but has the fear of who? could be reading it, what they would be judging, not anymore glad, but uh, that's where I was always holding on to a pencil, doodling, even in my lectures, and um, yeah, got through that. What it did was immense healing for me to express what the discomforts I was having, the emotions, the words that I didn't have to express. Even on the most uh, tiring day, I would still pick up a canvas to um, release that emotions, unsaid emotions, and just find peace within myself. Yeah. <clears throat> and when I moved uh, from India to Ireland, the first thing is I gifted myself with so much of art stuff. And then when we moved from Ireland to Seattle, my cargo was delayed. First thing is, found a shop where they do all the art stuff, got some art canvases and everything. I began. That is my first most important thing, candles and art stuff. And that is how valuable they are to me. And when I look back at some of my art, they speak some stories and some don't speak any stories. Some have no soul in it. 
some have sadness in it, and some things are just about the soul expression given at that time, like, you know, not judging, not trying to criticize my own art, which I have done, trust me. And now I realize, no, it's not about criticizing, it's about accepting, hey, what a beautiful it is, and what have I expressed out, how relieved I am, how lighter I feel now, and that was the most important thing, yeah. And setting your intention and to release that, it was so easy and liberating until I found the healing journey with Reiki. And when I found this path, I realized how I was already healing and how I could add Reiki into this beautiful portal that I was letting out and how such a free flow it became. I was not stiff, like drawing within the lines. I became more of abstract or going with the flow and not thinking about who is going to watch it, who is going to judge me, but am I enjoying it or not? And that is some of the shifts that came in, and not only in the art perspective, but in the life perspective as well. And that is something that I want to highlight here, that your life changes as like you become more mobile, you become more agile to things, you become more accepting, You become more let go of things that are not uh, worth to hold on to. There's so much deeper benefits that you get out of just holding a brush or a pen and committing to it every single day. There is so much of a deeper expression that comes in because this beautiful intuitive is intuitive art is coming directly as a channel from your heart, from the source that is speaking to you. Have you ever felt or see an art in a museum or a friend's place somewhere, it was speaking to you. Because there was an energy that that has been created with, and that energy was speaking to you. And when you look with a different mood, that art may not be speaking to you. Again, this is how the soul speaks to us, yeah. And the other thing I started noticing was, what are the colors that I was picking up? The blues, the reds, the greens, where is it coming from? And I noticed I was drawn more into the landscape, which is all about blues and greens. And then I realized now I'm not into those. I'm using all the colors equally as much as possible and maybe more of purple, to be honest. But at that time, it was more my speaking, my throat chakra opening up and then my heart chakra opening up to speak up my truth and not wondering about who is going to judge me, who is going to think, what am I right in saying, what am I right not right in saying. And sooner I realized art became my meditation and um, has always been my meditative portal. And I never connected it that way until the healing path came in. I realized it's my meditation where I don't think about life issues I just go into a magical land. All I think about that time is what are the colors? How do I color, mix the colors? What are the ratios? What is my output? This is it. Like, you know, nothing of the practical, the life things do hold on into that moment. So I realized like this is a beautiful way or a purpose for me to express and to be in that beautiful state, not thinking about the earthy things which can be taught about later or uh, can't be done anything about it, right? They take up more space than actually anything being productive, yeah. And as you do that, as you express yourself, and slowly you can even try ask yourself, what lights you up and what would we like to do if you had more time and money? Some people do say, hey, I don't have enough time or I don't have money to spend. And some of the stuff to begin with don't cost you so much. Said it's only 15 minutes a day maybe or a week. Like, you know, spend only little time. But start. Starting is the first thing. And I always believe life is a festival. Life is a magical thing. We are here to live it fully rather than holding it up. Like, you know, uh, not using our gifts that we are here for. Again, you don't need to be an artist. You're not aiming to be an artist. You're only aiming to spend. Speak to your soul. You're listening. You're listening to your higher self. You're listening to your guides. If you believe in angels, you're listening to the wisdom that's coming down. And you're only listening by silencing your mind through art. 
And now this is one of the beautiful techniques to do it and less of an effort as well. Yeah, when you get into the flow of it. And colors are such a beautiful vibration of light. They bring in balance into our lives very easily and of course through accessible method that people we all can use to heal ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> and these all work at a frequency that's right for us to what's happening again, like you know, paying attention. Being attracted to which is right at you, looking at your wardrobe or the colors that you're being picked up are the most important thing that you need to be noticing with. Yeah. And that's the most important thing that you can start and picking up uh, or a place to start with. That's the most important thing. And I love this uh, quote that Liz Gilbert has mentioned. You were born to create regardless of the outcome. And who are we to judge the outcome, right? And um, what is the outcome? My outcome might be different to your outcome, right? To what's happening to you, to what's happening to others. And this is the moment, like, you know, I started up uh, uh, holding a workshop called Healing Through Art where it all emerged, like wondering how I can bring this out to more wider people who are not professional artists like me. But hey, we can create a space where we are just expressing ourselves. So when I began this uh, back in 2012, I think, uh, we were, I was um, holding the space for people, uh, giving them the canvas that they can hook up on the wall. The idea was to go into their childhood memory and draw the colors, the things that they remember from it through a meditation and do their best in what they think about it because it needs to make sense to you, not to anyone else, and put it out. Some people drew about their golf kit. Some did about the table tennis they were playing and some did about like a, a childhood tree they love about like or the garden they grew up in or the animal they had when they were younger. So it's so beautiful, magical, nearly forgotten memories that you don't even have a photograph memory of it. And now bringing that back into the vision and keeping in your living room or in your sacred space, watching it is just connecting you into your inner child, inner child senses. That's the most important thing. And now your inner child is speaking so deeply. It's healing to whatever you are being feeling stuck right now. Say, for example, you want to um, communicate, speak up or write or express and your inner child has the strength of doing it because as a child, maybe you were stronger at it, but in your adulthood, you became introvert. Now, that strength is going to come out to you and let you speak what you write about or let you speak through the words and express yourself. So these are the strengths or even like, you know, if you're having a challenge in a relationship, it allows you to see a perspective from the other angle because you're calming your mind through this beautiful art meditative process. And this is where, again, like you're seeing the different perspective, a different understanding and a whole new level of healing comes into your path. Yeah. So here is the most important thing to know about this beautiful, beautiful healing journey that we all can go into. <clears throat> and even thinking about without anything, majority of us, 99% of people, we love colors. I mean, colors are a survival reason, right? We just love the nature. Who doesn't like autumn colors? Like, you know, forget about the cold and the wind and the rain. But who doesn't like the autumn colors or the spring budding up with the new colors, new uh, growth that is coming in, right? So this is where that interesting connection is coming in. So if you're curious, if you're interested, I'm holding a little workshop uh, this weekend. I do hold once a month, uh, which is called Healing Through Art. Again, you don't need to be an artist. But if you're interested, this is a workshop where I bring in small group of people who are like-minded, love to have some creative time for themselves. It is being done right now online that we rush every day, but here we can pause, recheck from time to time. We can unwind and have a conversation with our soul, with our emotions, with the colors, and then we get into the flow 
through a meditation and we put that out onto the paper, onto the canvas. And then I do give a little reading about what is that message being there. Like, you know, if you're struggling to find out the color, generally we all have the power to know what are we letting go, what are we expressing. And sometimes, is this what I mean? I can tune in through the intuition and I can work with you on that and also pick up angel cards, which are, again, generally they invoke what the message for us is deep within to come back to it. Yeah, again, it's not about being uh, confessing um, or being right or wrong with our art, but it is about just speaking to our soul deep within and releasing and sometimes I've noticed people have been releasing the chronic illnesses or the pains or the discomforts they're having as well so if you're interested do come over to my website and book a spot there is early booking offer and remember colors can release intense emotions colors can speak to your soul and colors can heal and heal on all the perspectives of our life yeah and definitely you don't need to know the technical details. I even don't know, but I have been doing numerous art and um, most most of the days, like, you know, and somewhere it's all about releasing and the connection. And that is what it's most important to know. And if you love the idea, do try it out yourself. Definitely have some fun time with you. Go grab some crayons, pencils, pastels acrylics oils watercolors there's so much options right now in this world we have got grab them and start that journey or have a pencil have a pen doodle up and see what comes out that's it be very much uh, curious about your own connection to your soul and let those words speak out yeah and I would absolutely love to hear back how you're getting on if you tried it and uh, if you're going to try and you want to know more about it. I do offer some um, courses on Inside Timer which are free as well. You can join them and check them out. Yeah. Thank you, friends, for listening in and bring color into your life and just sparkle and spread your sparkles and uh, your Light everywhere that you wake and go. Thank you for listening in. Namaste. Thank you all for listening in and tuning into the podcast Life is Magical. I hope you found some good nuggets to move through this way. Want to ask a question? Please email me or stay connected if something resonated or found useful and helpful from this podcast. I love to hear back from you. My email is info at threemanju.com. That is S-R-I-M-A-N-J-U, which is in the show notes below. Until next week, namaste and good day. Happy magic. Love to you all. Thank you for listening in.